All right, welcome back. Let's get into the startup scripts for OpenBSD. <clears throat> I've been wanting to get into this and I've been putting it off because I felt like I needed to go over some more advanced shell scripting stuff before I would feel comfortable going through this for the sake of preserving the noob to dev philosophy of this channel. But now I've gone over some of that advanced stuff, so let's get into it. So the first thing that I'll say is that <clears throat> this shell script is run by init, which is the first process that is run by the system, the first user space process that is run by the system <clears throat> when the system boots up. And basically all that init does is run the RC script and uh, catch signals, set up terminals and stuff and logging so that the shell script can actually run and put output to your screen. But other than that, RC does the real work of the startup, starting up the system. So the first thing that we'll notice is that there's a couple utility functions that get defined first, like a function to strip comments from <clears throat> the file passed as the first argument to it and <clears throat> a function to update resource limits based on the matching flag and capability arguments that are passed to it now i say matching because this capability has to go very specifically with this flag the capability is pulled from etsy slash login.conf and then used with a corresponding flag. So that capability gets you a value and that value is used with a particular flag in this ulimit command. <clears throat> so all of this is doing is setting resource limits for various processes, including this instance of this shell itself as well as anything that it forks <clears throat> and <clears throat> you can look into the details there's a whole manual page on login.conf <clears throat> but essentially ulimit is the way that shell scripts can affect this because you have to do it in the shell script for it to affect things that the shell script executes and forks off but anyway uh, it's just interesting to note that those two have to match. This function is only called, as far as I can tell, right here and right here. <clears throat> so this dash p goes with maxproc and this dash n goes with open files. So the person who is in charge of maintaining this for OpenBSD just has to keep that in mind. Just something that I thought was interesting. As well as the fact that when you run syscontrol, <clears throat> Those limits, if any, I guess these limits right here, would only be applied to the subshell. Which is interesting because when you pipe something to a complex command, that gets run in a subshell. <clears throat> and it's interesting that pipes get run in a subshell, but other input and output redirections do not. Like for example, this input redirection. So <clears throat> that's that, I guess. You've got a utility function that's gonna read your syscontrol.conf and run syscontrol on every line that you have in there. And then mixer control is kind of the same thing except they can use a pipe because you're not concerned about these limits being applied to a subshell, mixer control reads those lines and <clears throat> applies them to your sound system. So check the mixer control and mixercontrol.conf manual pages to see what's going on there. WS cons control affects settings for your terminal, like whether or not it will blank the screen after a certain amount of time, what keys are mapped where, that kind of stuff, <clears throat> which is kind of interesting. I don't spend enough time at a true terminal 
to really set any of that, so I'm not super familiar with it, but <clears throat> something worth noting. It's also interesting that this mixer control just runs it on the bare line, whereas this WS cons control conf runs an eval on the line. So if there are any dollar signs and parameters inside of WS cons control, they can be <coughs> used in each line. So I bet if we go to the wscons control.conf manual page, it will say that you can do variable assignments, which it does. But I bet if we go to the mixer control, dot conf manual page <clears throat> it will not have the same thing although it does say that you can have variable assignments <clears throat> which is interesting because I don't know exactly how that would work because it's just running mixer control dot or mixer control on every line so that probably needs to be changed to be an eval statement instead of <clears throat> such instead of the, I guess, hmm, that might need to be changed to be an eval. Although we should probably check the actual mixer control manual page, which does have the capability to simply assign parameters <coughs> to values. So that's how they get around that. And if we look at the WSCONS control manual page, <clears throat> they also have that capability, but it's interesting that you can use already defined It's interesting that you can use already defined shell parameters in here, but not in here. <clears throat> so I guess if there's some parameter that gets defined in the RC script, you could have it be substituted in your wscons.conf file. Interesting stuff to me. I don't know, I'm a nerd. I think that stuff is weird and cool. <clears throat> so this, you can't really understand what's going on here at a deep level without getting into the kernel, I believe. <clears throat> but it's basically just setting up your random number generator for the system. So you can read from slash dev slash random on USB to get high quality random data. The real way that everyone does it on OpenBSD is using a function called arc4random, <clears throat> but that function under the hood reads from devrandom. <clears throat> and then I know because I've studied the boot system a little bit that this <clears throat> gets read at boot before the kernel is even loaded. Um, <clears throat> just, it's interesting that this block size is significantly bigger than this one. Don't really know why that is. I just know a little, I've seen the code where this happens and it's kind of interesting. <clears throat> and this fill bad dynamic, every time I see this, I want to call it bad dynamic, but it's bad dynamic, <laughs> is just <clears throat> a way to prevent your system from using ports that are meant to be used with a specific service. So if you look in slash Etsy slash services, which is this file, it just looks like a bunch of lines like this, really. And essentially all of these numbers are port numbers for either TCP or UDP sockets that are supposed to be used with these particular services. So you can see, if I go down, 
www is port 80. So when you connect to a website without using encryption, you're using port 80. And you don't want your, <clears throat> you're connecting to port 80, I should say. Your end of the connection will have its own port, which you don't want to be one of these other ports because you might also be running or want to run a web server on your local machine. For example, if you're doing some web development or whatever, <clears throat> you don't want your local machine to use port 80 as its source port. So this is essentially preventing that from happening. And <clears throat> that's kind of cool. It's just a short little shell script that does all of that. The way that you actually do it is you put it into sysctl. Sys and if you're developing your own new service for some new server type, that doesn't yet have something in Etsy services, you would want to <clears throat> add a syscontrol-q sysctl plus equals whatever port you don't want to be dynamically allocated. And there is, in fact, <clears throat> you'll see at the very end, they do actually run a shell script if it exists, called rc.local, where you could do that. You could set your own or add to the list of services that you don't want to be dynamic source ports. <clears throat> and then there's this function called start daemon, which <clears throat> I think this is a good place to end the video because this will run this other command Etsy slash RC dot D slash daemon start. And this is a whole other bat can of worms. It's not a whole other can of worms. It's just another shell script file. Or actually, this is a pretty short shell script, but it references another shell script that's a little bit longer. But this is how daemons get started. So. <clears throat> You can see which daemons are started. You don't even need super user privileges to do this. LS on. This will list all of the daemons that are running on your machine. So you can see I have, I think this stands for advanced. I don't know. The PMD stand, it stands for a power management daemon, which allows you to suspend the system or hibernate it from the command line. <clears throat> Check quotas, I don't actually use check quotas, but it's essentially making sure that certain users, if you have it set up, it'll check and make sure that certain users aren't using more disk space than they're allowed to. Cron is something that you want to run. It runs tasks at various intervals. Library ASLR will reorder libraries at random intervals. NTPD keeps your system's clock in sync. PF and PF log D are the packet filter, so that's your firewall. I should do a video on packet filtering. Resolve D updates your <clears throat> DNS name resolution files. It's a pretty simple daemon as far as I'm aware, <clears throat> but it's you should have that running. SMTPD is your local mail server. It can also be your regular email. I actually have SMTPD running on an OpenBSD install on my Raspberry Pi in my house where I get most of my email. I do have a separate email account for <clears throat> other things just in case, but <clears throat> I have SMTPD is, hosts my main email. And then SNDIOD is your sound subsystem. SSHD allows remote logins to the system. And SYSLOGD is your system logging daemon. So all of these daemons rely on SYSLOGD to be able to log messages. And then XenoDM is the daemon that <clears throat> makes sure that my graphical user interface comes up at boot and handles me logging in and out that kind of stuff. So 
That's it for this video. I'm gonna go through more of this file, this make keys function, this reordering libraries function, this upgrade script, all these other functions. <clears throat> and once you actually get through the functions, there's not that much left. So this is the end of the subroutines. And if we <clears throat> count the words and lines in that region, it's only 347 lines. And I guess I can run that with just m meta equals. Yeah. So not a ton actually going on once you get all of the functions set up. That's kind of a lie because there is a net start function that does a lot more stuff. But anyway, that's it for this video. Hit like if you like this video, hit dislike if you didn't like it. And in either case, let me know in the comments down below why you liked it or didn't like it. As well as if you've got any questions, criticisms, or concerns, you can leave a comment for those as well. And as always, if you wanna get notified when I make new videos, hit subscribe. Thanks, peace.